another video um it is rap daily it's new cctv footage reveals young ace and um i think his name was Fol folio or something like that um it reveals something i'm not gonna say the word but yeah i just i can't i just i this is 20 minutes long and i just want to get right into it i honestly don't have any words like i'm just appalled at the whole situation i don't even know what the situation is but i'm just appalled at the whole the actions that's being taking place right now so let's just get into this video and figure out what's going on all right hey the pool party started the day at five six o'clock you already got the address pull up June 23rd, 2024, will forever be remembered as the day the rap world was turned upside down. Rapper Fulio met a brutal end in a shocking attack so in a Holiday Inn parking okay. lot in Tampa, Florida. But what really happened that fateful night? Was it a random act of violence, or was there something more dangerous at play? Brace yourself, because new CCTV footage has just surfaced, and it points a damning finger at one of Fulio's biggest rivals, Young Gene Ace, the murder of Fulio. In the early hours of June 23rd, 2024, the rap world was shaken as Fulio met a violent and tragic end. The rising star was ambushed at a Holiday Inn parking lot in Tampa, Florida, in a deadly attack that stunned fans and the music community alike. The events leading up to his untimely death began just a day earlier. On June 22nd, 2024, Fulio was in high spirits, eagerly preparing to celebrate his 26th birthday in grand style. Fulio was known for his vibrant personality and his love for his fans, and he wanted his birthday celebration to be nothing short of spectacular. He took to Instagram, his platform of choice, where he had amassed a significant following. In a video clip that would later haunt his followers, Fulio enthusiastically invited friends, fans, and fellow artists to join him for a pool party at an Airbnb in Tampa. Hey, the pool party started the day at 5, 6 o'clock. You already got the address. Pull up, man. You got the address. Pull up. If you need the address, DM me right now. The pool party started at 5, 6 o'clock. As the sun set on June 22nd, the party kicked into high gear. The Airbnb was buzzing with excitement, laughter, and the sound of Fulio's tracks playing in the background. As the evening progressed, Fulio was in high spirits, mingling with guests and enjoying the festivities. The rapper even took to Instagram to express how happy he was. Uh, appreciate everybody popping out for my birthday, you know what I'm saying? Birthday, happy birthday! Everybody got these five put this on. But as the crowd grew, so did the attention it attracted. The noise level escalated, drawing the curiosity of neighbors and the concern of the Airbnb host. By late evening, it became clear that the celebration had outgrown its venue. The Airbnb host, alarmed by the sheer number of attendees and the atmosphere, intervened, citing occupancy limits that had been exceeded. Despite the setback, Fulio was determined to keep the celebration going. He quickly arranged for the party to move to a nearby Holiday Inn. As everyone moved the party to the Holiday Inn, Fulio was still in a great mood happily greeting family and friends. However, the fun atmosphere hit something dark. Fulio and his friends didn't know that someone was secretly watching them the whole time. As the clock ticked past midnight, the festive mood began to shift. What had started as a joyous celebration was about to take a dark and deadly turn. Around 4.40 a.m., the Tampa Police Department received multiple urgent 911 calls reporting gunfire at the Holiday Inn on McKinley Drive. Officers rushed to the scene and were met with chaos. Two cars had been shot at, three people were found in stable condition, and one person was declared dead. The Tampa police did not identify the deceased, stating positive identification is pending confirmation from the medical examiner's office. However, it was later confirmed that the person who was declared dead was Fulio. The news of Fulio's murder spread quickly, throwing his fans and the music community into mourning. His attorney, Louis Fusco, confirmed the heartbreaking news in a solemn statement. I am deeply saddened to hear about the passing of Fulio, Fusco expressed. While most people knew him as the controversial rapper and entertainer, but if I was you know you live in a Charles specific Jones, lifestyle, and you got enemies. Was a young I don't see how it makes sense to yet he was throw a party the odds and succeed in everything. And you were the person sending around the address. Like, you don't know who knows who because you said, oh, somebody's watching me. You got random people, and I know it's random people. You got random people showing up at this party. You don't know who they know. His music resonated. Of course, somebody went who knew whoever, you know. Fulio's early career was marked by a series of mixtapes 
albums that showcased his unique style and lyrical prowess. Tracks like Crooks and Voodoo quickly gained traction, earning him a loyal fan base. His music videos, often depicting the gritty reality of street life, garnered millions of views on YouTube. Fulio's authenticity and raw talent set him apart from other artists, and he soon caught the attention of major record labels. In 2019, Fulio signed a deal with a prominent record label, marking a significant milestone in his career. This partnership allowed him to reach a wider audience and collaborate with other well-known artists. His debut album, Never Wanted. Fame was released in 2020 and received critical acclaim. The album featured hit singles like Double That and SRT, solidifying Fulio's place in the hip-hop industry. Despite his growing success, Fulio never forgot his roots or the fans who supported him from the beginning. His genuine connection with his audience was evident, and they loved him not just for his music, but for his resilience and determination. This bond was clear in the days leading up to his death when many of Fulio's fans became increasingly concerned about his safety. On June 14, just days before his death, Fulio posted an invite to his birthday bash on Instagram. He ex Are you having trouble trying to keep up with your professor? You've got to try Otter. Here's how it works. He excitedly announced, Tampa, Florida, my Airbnb pool party on June 21st, DM ME for address, and my official birthday party on June 22nd at Club Teasers. Club address, 9700 North Nebraska Avenue, Tampa, Florida, pull up. The message was filled with anticipation and excitement, but it also sparked worry among his followers. They urged him to be cautious, fearing that the celebrations might attract unwanted attention. In the exactly. comments section of the post, several fans expressed their concerns about the potential dangers of hosting such an event. Why are you doing this birthday bash, PLS camp? One fan pleaded. Another added, Man, ain't nobody trying to party with you and risk their lives. These comments reflected a genuine fear for Fulio's safety, as his history of violent encounters was well known among his followers. Fulio's fans had good reason to be concerned. The rapper had been linked to various shootings over the years. In 2021, he survived an it's attack. It's crazy because they all in like these music videos just playing with guns and they're just thinking it's cool and it's In July of 2020, now his life is gone. And he looked young Fulio too. Now his life is gone. Now he got no life. Foot after being attacked by assailants while departing from a gas station near Paxton School for Advanced Studies. Following surgeries conducted at a hospital in Jacksonville, he started a lawsuit against the hospital for allegedly revealing his location. Despite the warnings and his violent past, Fulio decided to go ahead with the party. After Fulio's tragic death, the Tampa Police Department quickly took charge of the investigation, determined to bring the killer to justice. The police worked tirelessly to peace together with what had happened. They started by securing the crime scene and gathering evidence. According to Tampa Police Department Public Information Officer Joni Lewis, there are cameras here and our officers are working to view all of the cameras and talk with people who might have seen anything or heard anything. Crime analyst Tom Hackney provided additional insights, suggesting that the shooter could be linked to a rival group from Jacksonville, Fulio's hometown. Hackney noted, after doing this for so long, I would tend to think this is more of a Jacksonville-based regional kind of beef between two groups. Maybe took advantage of a foolish posting saying where he was. His analysis pointed to the possibility that Fulio's social media activity might have revealed his location to his enemies, setting the stage for the fatal ambush. Hackney's theory seemed to hold weight when Yungin Ace, one of Fulio's biggest rivals, all but confessed to the crime. Just hours after Fulio's death, Yungin Ace dropped a new track called Do It, where he openly raps about taking out his enemies. The release of the song came just hours after Fulio was killed in the parking lot of a Tampa hotel. While Yungin Ace doesn't mention Fulio by name, the video, which has been posted above, depicts masked men shooting another man in what looks like the parking lot of a motel. The lyrics in the song are also very pointedly about shooting someone. Catch his ass and do his ass, you know he finished. Yungin raps on the track. Flip his ass and smoke his ass, we stand on business, he continued. That's, While some people that's dismiss sketchy, the song but as just Yungin Ace being petty, others recognize it as a chilling confession. The tension between Fulio and Yungin Ace was I don't know, all this it was a deadly kind of saga weird. that had unfolded over years. These two weren't just rivals, they were the central figures in one of the bloodiest gang wars Jacksonville had Did ever he drop the song the and the video at the same together. time or was it just the song first the and scene, then the video? You might not know about the fierce rivalry between the video. ATK and KTA gangs. This because rivalry isn't that don't just make, about music. How it's a deadly you, feud that's shaking up Jacksonville. How would he know that he was at a hotel? That's what I'm saying. Like, in lyrical battles. Two rappers facing and then hours and then like two hours later dropped the music video. These like that don't make sense. creative and expressive but sometimes they spill over into real life leading to violent confrontations. The most infamous example 
example of this was the East Coast versus West Coast rivalry in the 1990s, which tragically claimed the lives of two hip-hop legends, Tupac Shakur and the notorious Big Now. Jacksonville is seeing its own deadly drama unfold between ATK and KTA Gang. The star of the ATK Gang is Yungin Ace. Ace grew up in an environment where violence and crime were a part of everyday life. Raised by a single mother, Ace's family frequently moved around, eventually settling in Jacksonville, Florida. His father was serving time in prison, leaving Ace without a paternal figure. Instead, he looked up to his uncle, who became the guiding force in his life. However, tragedy struck when Ace was just 14 years old. His uncle passed away, leaving him devastated and searching for an outlet to cope with his pain and anger. In the streets of Jacksonville, what that gotta Ace do with you trying to kill people? Began to channel his emotions and experiences. That has nothing to do with that. Using music as a way to tell his story. In 2014, well, he started if you, dropping tracks. If you tracks, ain't great, pray to God. Why are you? Like, that ain't got Ace nothing to do with you. Posted up with guns, ready to shoot somebody killer. because there they step on your shoe. Like you know, it don't make sense. Or simply attack. ATK quickly gained a reputation for its ruthless tactics and deadly encounters. This crew, known for their affiliation with the Melvin Park area of Jacksonville, includes several notorious members like the infamous Queso, often referred to as the Demon of Jacksonville. Queso, whose real name is Hakeem like Robinson, they... is one of the most notorious members of the ATK gang. Known for his violent reputation, it's crazy Queso has been that, in that murders, hype them up over stuff like the this. ongoing gang conflicts in the area. He stands accused of the murders of Adrian it's like them same people, and Charles McCormick, both the same people the who, told, who, who told that, who told actions, that guy Queso not to throw that party, right? Because they were in fear of safety. But y'all that same person who at their concert promoting the violence. Check this out, this okay. clip of a recording session. You didn't, you so, you for real? His music often includes graphic descriptions of Everyone violence wants to and turn up to that. Like, further cementing his that? reputation as one of the most dangerous individuals in the Jacksonville rap scene. ATK's sworn enemies are KTA, which stands for Kill Them All. In the early 2010s, Jacksonville was a city on edge. The abundance of guns and the prevalence of gang culture created a violent so environment people, where respect and territory like him, they don't care, contested. So. It was in this chaotic backdrop that the KTA gang began to take shape. The genesis of KTA was rooted in the remnants of the notorious PCE gang, which had once wreaked havoc across the city. The PCE was crippled by the law, with its top members being charged with murder and firearm offenses. This left a void quickly filled by those who remained, hungry for leadership and direction. It is speculated that during this period, Fulio became part of the gang. Much like Jungian Ace, Fulio's life was marked by violence from an early age. As a young child, he witnessed his father being shot in the head twice in a brutal attack, a retaliation after his father had beaten up a man a month earlier. These experiences hardened him, and over the years, he rose to become a crucial part of the gang. Fulio's influence continued to grow as he matured, with his music deeply rooted in his personal experiences and struggles resonating with listeners. Despite the numerous challenges he faced, Fulio's so rise in the hip-hop world like, was marked by his so unwavering yo, dedication yo and the support of his crew and to go Together, they carved out a space for themselves to follow in, in what your dad was doing, and he got your dad killed. That would soon unfold with young Ace and it his don't crew make ATK. sense. The initial spark that ignited Because obviously his dad, his dad on the video, some like his dad went to go jump somebody, he got killed for that. So you go into the same thing that your dad was doing. And then now you got killed for that. Like that don't make sense. These clashes quickly escalate, leading to a deadly cycle of retaliation and Like I understand, like grief is a powerful thing, I know, but it's just like to a seemingly trivial altercation at a Kodak Black concert. What started as a kid when that happened, so you grew up. Fight, igniting a chain reaction I, I don't even know. It's just, the violence it's reached a crazy. new level of horror when a 22 month old baby named Aiden McClendon was accidentally killed in a drive by shooter this tragic event was believed to be retaliation for the incident at the concert highlighting and the now look innocent people getting killed because the, ongoing feud. the rivalry reached a boiling point the tragic reason. killing of Zion Brown this incident would not only mark a significant turning point in the conflict but also set off a chain reaction of violence that would leave the community in chaos Zion Brown known for his friendly demeanor and aspirations beyond the violent streets of Jacksonville was not just any young man. He was rapper Fulio's blood cousin. Active in the streets, Zion's death was a devastating blow that highlighted the brutal reality of the ongoing feud. In the early morning of May 27, 2017, the peaceful silence of a Jacksonville home was shattered. Zion Brown was asleep at his family home along with his 16-year-old sister and four other children. The night took a horrific turn when a crashing noise from the kitchen woke them up. Someone had thrown a rock through the sliding glass door and 
and moments later, gunfire erupted into the house. DeAndre Thomas, known as Trey Shorty, had broken into the home and was now walking through it with a gun. The children scrambled to take cover as Thomas entered the living room and started shooting. Zion, his sister, and another young girl were hit. Zion succumbed to multiple gunshot wounds, dying amidst the chaos, while his sister and the other child sustained serious injuries but survived. The police arrived swiftly, and the scene they encountered was one of utter devastation. SB, Zion's sister, recognized Thomas from social media and a music video on YouTube, identifying him as Trey Shorty. She showed his Facebook profile to the officers, leading to his arrest the next day. Following his arrest, Thomas was taken in for questioning. Despite initially cooperating, he quickly ceased communication when confronted with inconsistencies in his story. Over his the subsequent years, that? while awaiting trial, oh, Thomas was implicated in further attempts to silence witnesses, including orchestrating another shooting that injured SB again. The violence between the ATK and KTA gangs had already turned Jacksonville into a war zone, but Zion's death added fuel to the fire. It is said that the KTA gang discovered Thomas's association with Young Ace. Thomas had this previously been charged question, as an accomplice but where is Jacksonville at? Young Ace. While it remains unclear whether Ace had Where's any knowledge of the hit or if he or someone he knows was involved, this connection intensified the rivalry. ATK would retaliate in a bloody manner, which many believe set off a chain it of events like it might be Ace to seek vengeance against uh... Fulio. Why Young Gene killed Fulio. Following Zion's death, Fulio and KTA were quietly planning their biggest move yet, taking out Young Gene Ace himself. The night of June 5th, 2018, began like any other for Young Gene Ace and his brothers. They were out celebrating Trayvon Bullard's birthday, a night meant for joy and laughter. The group, consisting of Young Gene Ace, Trayvon Bullard, Royale Smith, and Jacoby Groover, decided to dine at a local restaurant in Jacksonville, Florida. The atmosphere was filled with excitement and camaraderie as they enjoyed their meal, unaware of the impending danger that lurked in the shadows. As the clock ticked closer to 11 p.m., the group decided to leave the restaurant and head home. They entered into their vehicle with young Gene Ace in the passenger seat and his brothers in the back. The streets were relatively quiet and the night seemed peaceful. However, this tranquility was short-lived. At approximately 11.30 p.m., as they drove through the city, an unknown vehicle began to tail them. The group, engrossed in conversation, did not immediately notice the car following them. Suddenly, the trailing vehicle accelerated and pulled up alongside them. Without warning, the assailant opened fire, unleashing a hail of bullets on Young Gene Ace and his brothers. The sound of gunfire echoed through the streets, shattering the night's silence. The vehicle carrying Ace and his brothers was riddled with bullets, and the scene quickly descended into chaos. Ace was hit multiple times, but in the midst of the confusion, he managed to call for help. His brothers, however, were not as fortunate. Trevon Bullard, Royale Smith, and Jacoby Groover all succumbed to their injuries. And look how, look the how young they look, y'all. The shooting was a scene of devastation. Emergency services arrived quickly, but there was little they could do for Trayvon, Royale, and Jacoby. Young and Ace, despite his injuries, was rushed to the hospital. He looked like a baby. Life. To make like matters worse, just... Ace's legal troubles increased when it was discovered. Even right here, he looked like he got shooting, no bigger than like 20, 22. University Boulevard. Video evidence from the store led to Ace being charged with a probation violation for firearm involvement. Facing the aftermath of the shooting and the legal consequences, Ace surrendered to authorities. He was charged with violating his probation from a 2017 accessory conviction related to an attempted robbery. His probation terms explicitly prohibited him from having any contact with firearm and the video of Bullard handling a gun was enough for the judge to deny bail. Adding to his torment, Ace was also denied the chance to attend his brother's funeral, a heartbreaking denial of closure. However, KTA was not done. Their next target was Corbin Odell Johnson. On July 11, 2018, 18-year-old Corbin Johnson's day started like any other. At around 4 in the afternoon, he FaceTimed his friends, informing them he was at an Amazon facility for a job and was awaiting a ride. Later that day, his father, Corey Mormon, recounted dropping Corbin off for another job interview with UPS at around 5 in the evening, picking him up 45 minutes later. Subsequently, like, Corey could y'all imagine that? Like, somebody really woke up this morning and was like, yeah, Corbin's today's mother, your day. Jackson saw her that son, is was at scary, that dude. Night. The following morning, Corey sent a text message to Corbin at 8.45 a.m., which went unanswered, raising immediate concerns. By the evening of July 13th, 2018, but you knew still what your son was in, though. missing to the Jackson Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, sparking an investigation. Despite their efforts, the authorities made no significant progress. Y'all knew what he was doing. days turned into weeks, then months, with no leads on Corbin's whereabouts. As the first anniversary of Corbin's disappearance approached, his family planned a memorial at Riverside's Memorial Park. However, fate took a tragic turn. On the evening of July 11th, 2019, exactly one year after Corbin went missing, a man clearing land off Utsi Road made a shocking discovery. Corbin's skeletal remains were found, wrapped and buried in a black bag. This heartbreaking discovery brought a tragic end to the family's search. After Corbin's body was found, Fulio wasted no time taking to Instagram to mock the tragic discovery. 
a kid died like a little baby, like a little boy. During this tense period, it is said that young Gene Ace was biting his tongue. It's crazy because I remember this. I remember it was all on social media and people kept talking about like Corbin and stuff. I didn't know this this situation at first, but dang, I remember this going viral on social media. Everybody kept, I, I kept wondering because everybody kept saying Corbin, Corbin, I'm like what? Born and raised in Jacksonville, Florida. It is Florida, okay, yeah. I, I remember it. They kept talking about Florida. A knack for making people laugh. Adrian lived in the hill. Village Apartments, a complex located on West 45th Street. This area, like many others in Jacksonville, faced the challenges of urban life. But and it it's crazy because all these are like, you, I keep saying this, but clearly like all these are beautiful young men who are strong-minded. And, and it's like, casting a somber mood over the hilltop you use that good quality for these actions. It's like, come on, man. That's not cool. Family. As Adrian made his way through the parking lot of the Hilltop Village Apartments, the tranquility of the afternoon was shattered by the sound of gunfire. Multiple shots rang out. Cause look, them two did, and now look, I bet you so somebody about to be on his hit. Hit. The other dude hit list. He about to be on One somebody else's hit list now because it's just all a retaliation thing. That's it. Retaliation, 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 retaliation. At what point does it stop? To identify him in the months. Following Bibby's death, the taunting from the ATK gang was relentless. Queso, known as ATK's top shooter, took the mockery further by putting Bibby and other fallen KTA members on the cover of his album, Bibby Out. This blatant act of disrespect only escalated the feud. Young Gene Ace later released a diss track where he mentioned several deceased individuals involved in violent altercations, including Bibby. In the track, Look, Young Gene several Ace deceased people, the killing and I bet lines. you people Who was at his concert Bibby, screaming all their names. Didn't stop there. Reports indicated that not Bibby's even really. You don't even know what they're talking about. Just, just singing gray, stuff. Adding more fuel to the already raging fire between the rival gangs. And people don't they even realize their words are powerful. Grave, they urinated on his grave. They made fun of our rabbits. Right, that's but somebody's they son. They was marching. They mocked us every chance that they got. Queso was later identified as Bibby's killer and was indicted by a grand jury for first degree murder. Queso was already in custody for another murder when the indictment Look how came. young good looking he is. Video and and this is the life that you're that choosing. It's like, man, you just this keep throwing your life away. Blow to Julio Julio. Why? Really to you to be making so much again. better choices. Like, I know life is hard and I know sometimes people feel like they don't have a choice, but you do have a choice. You do. You just choose Choose to do the fast money route, the fast life, and it's not it. Julio danced around a graveyard. It's the not it. The three victims singing happy birthday and mocking their deaths. This act of provocation was seen by many as the breaking point for young Guinness, potentially leading to further violent retaliation on Julio's birthday. How about you? What do you think? Do you think young Guinness killed Julio? Leave your comment down below. Thank you for. All right, we're not doing that. What do you think, stuff? This is all allegedly. Um. But yeah, man, I, I just, these videos, like I said, they are so tough to watch. Like I literally have to, I keep telling y'all, like I got to fight back my tears. So I'm not trying to keep crying on this camera over, like literally this is people I don't know, but it's just, it's just tough situations and it's so sad. Like, it's like, these are, I keep saying that they beautiful young men who are strong minded, probably really smart because you know. Street smarts, whatever you want to call it, really smart. And some of them are really smart. They just, they just don't care. But they choose to do this what they like. And it's like, look how young they look. Like, y'all haven't even seen life yet. Like, y'all really haven't seen nothing yet. I just... I just feel terrible, though. I do feel terrible. This makes me feel absolutely terrible. I hate seeing, I hate seeing our men like this. Like I, I keep saying it, but I hate, I really do hate seeing our men like this. Like we gotta wish for better for our men. We gotta pray for better. Like we got to pray that they, that they just do better. We got to y'all. All right, I'm not gonna do too much because this was a long video, but just like, comment, subscribe. I don't know. I'll see y'all when I see y'all.